Hello, my name is Michael Koch. I'm a Christian Bible teacher, author, and counselor from the United States. Pastor Davison Musa asked me to present a series of teachings based on the Bible. In this first video Bible teaching, I will give a brief summary of what the Bible is, what it's about, God's plans for us, and why Jesus is the most important person in the Bible. God is our Father. One of the ways he chooses to talk with us, his children, is to send an ex extensive series of personal messages to us from him. This is the Bible. In the Bible, God explains who he is, who we are as his children, how he wants us to live our lives, and the things he will do for us. I will now give you an overview of what the Bible is about and why we need to read it, and also why Jesus is the most important person in the Bible. God created human beings because he wanted a family to be with him and to love. How do we know this? Because at the end of the Bible, when everything is completed, those that follow God will be adopted children of God the Father, actual brothers and sisters of Jesus, and we will all be brothers and sisters with each other as part of God's big family. God created the first man and woman to begin this family, who was Adam and Eve. God created man and woman as sinless. God used to appear to this first man and woman, Adam and Eve, and speak with them regularly. God put them in charge over all of the plants and animals that he created, and he allowed Adam to name all the animals. Adam and Eve were without sin, and they had a close relationship with God. This is from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. God wants all human beings to go to heaven and be with him one day. However, heaven is a sinless place. Heaven is where God lives and sin is not allowed there. If a person committed a sin, he or she is not allowed into God's presence in his home, heaven. God gave man and woman free will. They can choose if they want to follow God's commands or not. God did not want them to be like robots or slaves who could not choose what they wanted to do. God wanted man and woman to love him because they chose to not because they had to, because they were programmed to and had no other option.
When God spoke with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, one of the things that he told them was they were not allowed to eat of the fruit of the tree from the knowledge of good and evil. God warned them that if they ate from the tree, they would surely die. This is found in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. One day, the devil appeared in the form of a serpent and told Adam and Eve that they would not die if they ate from the tree. Satan told them that God was lying to them and that God was actually afraid that if they ate from the tree, they would become all-powerful like he was. Adam and Eve had a choice to make. Follow what God told them or follow what the devil told them. They chose to follow what the devil told them. They went against God's word to them and they ate from the tree. This is found in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 and 19. This was a sin, and they broke their fellowship with God. They now had sin on them. Because of this, now they would die. And when they died, they would not be allowed into heaven, because heaven does not allow sin to enter into it. Sin is like a virus that infected their souls and was passed on to the souls of all of their children, including us. For example, Adam and Eve's first children were Cain and Abel. Cain became angry at God over a small matter and killed his brother Abel in his sinful anger. This can be found in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. Sin was already horribly affecting mankind right from the start with Adam and Eve and their children Cain and Abel. There is no hope for mankind to be right with God and get to heaven to be with him without God helping man. God loves people, and he wanted all of us to love and follow him while we're on earth and to be with him in heaven as his children after we die. God also wanted us to know him, to know about him, and to live our lives the way he wanted us to. Therefore, God gave us the first part of his plan to help us with our sins. It taught us right from wrong, and it partially taught us about God, what he wants from us, and how he wants us to live. He gave us the law. The law can be found in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy in the Bible, along with a lot of commands that he gave us through the prophets in the Bible.
The Old Testament in the Bible is filled with laws or rules from God that let the people know how God wanted them to live. They taught us right from wrong. And if the people followed these laws perfectly, they would not commit any sins and they would get to heaven. Among the examples of these laws are the Ten Commandments, and they can be found in Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 to 21. Before God gave us the law, people did not know right from wrong. The world was very sinful and evil, and it needed to be shown by God that much of the things the people were doing were very wrong. Their hearts needed to change from loving what was evil to loving what was good. The first step in this was they had to be informed about what God said was good and bad. There are many laws and rules in the Old Testament of the Bible. Now the Old Testament is before Jesus came. The New Testament starts when Jesus came to earth, and it's all about him and after him. Mankind tried to follow God's laws for us, but people were, were weak and they kept messing up and they kept breaking God's rules. They kept sinning. The Old Testament is a story of God letting the people of Israel know right from wrong with his laws and rules, and the people of Israel trying to follow God's laws and rules. People were, and still are, of a sin nature, as a result of Adam and Eve sinning against God. In the Old Testament, the Israelites would routinely be in a lot of distress as a result of the sins that they committed. They would cry out to God for help and he would save them. They would be good for a while, but would start to turn away from God and sin again. Their sins would get worse and worse until eventually they would experience the disastrous consequences of their sins. They would cry out to God and he would save them again and they would again start to sin and their sinning would get progressively worse, etc. This pattern happened over and over again all throughout the Old Testament. The first part of God's plan to both save and transform people, it taught them right from wrong by God giving them the law. If people followed God's laws and rules perfectly, they would not sin. The problem was, the people were, and still are, too weak and sinful to follow God's laws and rules perfectly. And they and we keep kept sinning over and over again.
the people all sinned and needed more than the law to save them. God's law cannot save anyone once they have sinned. The law can warn people against sinning, to let people know what is wrong and to not do it. But once a person sinned, the law could not save them from that sin that they committed. If anything, the law condemned people of their sins. The law told people what God's rule was, and if the person broke it, he could not say, I did not know I was sinning, because God informed them it was a sin in the law. Both God and man were in a bind, and the fate of mankind depended on how God would deal with this bind. God is a completely holy and sinless God. He will not allow sin to be in his presence, in his home in heaven. When a person sins, that person has that sin on them, and we have all sinned. We all sin many times in our lives and have countless sins on us by the time that we die. If God just forgave us of our sins, he would not be holy. He would say, I know that all of you committed countless sins in your lives. That's okay. I'll let it pass. You can enter heaven, all of you, with all of your sins on you. God would then be surrounded by an infinity of sin in his presence in heaven in his home. God is completely holy and that cannot happen. Here is the bind. God could condemn the sin as he should because he is all holy. But then none of us would get into heaven because we are all covered in sin. The only other eternal place for human beings besides heaven is hell. Remember, God created us because he wanted children and he wanted to have a loving family with them. If God straight out condemned us for our sins, we completely fail God's plan for his family and all his children, including us, would be in hell. That is not at all good either. So the bind for God is this. How does the sinning of the people get the judgment that an all-holy God requires, yet save his children who did the sinning from the wrath of his judgment, clean them from their sins, and have them enter his family and heaven as completely sinless children of God's family? Mankind's fate hung in a balance depending on what God would do with this problem. And this is where Jesus comes in.
God implemented the second part of his plan to save and redeem us from our sins so we can have a relationship with him while we're on earth and go to heaven and be with him when we die. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit, who all existed in heaven forever, decided that Jesus, who was God in heaven, would come to earth and also become a human like all of us. While on earth, Jesus led a completely sinless life in word, deed, and thought. He was and will always remain the only person to never sin in any way throughout their whole life. He was in complete obedience to the will of God the Father, obedience to the point of accepting his Father's will that he should die as a sacrifice for the sins of all of mankind. Only a perfect, sinless sacrifice would be acceptable to God the Father to pay for the sins of the entire world. Jesus was that perfect sacrifice by leading a perfect, sinless, obedient life to God the Father. Jesus was the perfect, sinless obedience to God the Father that the rest of mankind was too weak in their sin to be. Then, all the sins that people committed in their lifetimes, including us, were taken off of us and placed on Jesus when he was on the cross. Jesus was then punished to death by the wrath of God the Father being unleashed on him while all our sins were on Jesus and um, when he was on the cross. Jesus was punished to death in our place with our sins on him on the cross. Because of Jesus doing this, Whoever accepts and follows Jesus as their God can now be forgiven of their sins by God because Jesus paid for all of their sins. And God the Father accepted Jesus' death as a sacrifice and payment for all of our sins. Jesus, who was flawless in following the will of God the Father throughout his entire life, was punished to death for our sake. None of us were strong enough to avoid sinning for our entire lives, so he did it for us. After Jesus was punished to death with our sins on him, he then rose from the dead, and those that follow him will also rise from the death of our sins. By following Jesus, we are now able to be forgiven of our sins by God. By accepting Jesus and what he did for us, and by following him as our God, 
This enables us now to go to heaven when we die because Jesus paid for our sins. If we do not accept Jesus and what he did for us, out of our free will to choose this, our sins cannot be forgiven. If we follow Jesus as our God, along with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, our sins can be forgiven by God, because Jesus paid for them. If we reject following Jesus, no forgiveness of sins is possible. That is the only way God made as a plan to pay for our sins. His act of dying on the cross for us, punished with our sins taken off of us and placed on him, is the only method accepted by God the Father to pay for our sins. If we choose to not follow Jesus, we then reject the plan God made for us to be forgiven of our sins. And it's the only plan he has for us to be forgiven of our sins. We are then declared guilty of our sins by God when we die. If we do not follow Jesus, we now cannot be with God and get into heaven when we die because sin is not allowed there. Instead, we go to a place where people go who reject Jesus and what he did for us to pay for our sins. We would go to hell. You don't want to go there. And you don't have to. Just follow Jesus. In the Bible, the Old Testament shows why we need a Savior. We are too weak to follow God's laws that were designed to prevent us from sinning. The New Testament is all about the Savior, who is Jesus. Completely obedient to the will of God the Father, Jesus led a sinless life and took all of our sins onto him and got put to death with our sins on him. He then rose from the dead. Now we can be forgiven of our sins by God so we can be friends with him while we're on the earth and go to heaven and be with him when we die. God fixed the bind that he and we were in concerning our sin. What does an all-holy God do with the people who all committed countless sins against him, who yet want to be part of God's family, which God wants them to be too? In addition to informing people about the fall of man, God's salvation plan to save man, and how to enter into the salvation plan, the Bible has a second major purpose for us. The Bible informs us about how we are supposed to live our lives while we are here on earth. Both the Old and New Testaments are full of information about how, God, about how God wants us to live our lives. Information is given to us about how God wants us to live our lives in two major ways.
The first is by God directly telling us about how he wants us to live our lives. He speaks to the people directly and through the prophets all throughout the Bible about this. Additionally, the Bible is a collection of true stories about the lives of numerous people involved in God's grand plan for mankind. Example, the story of Adam and Eve, story of Noah, the story of Abraham, the story of Moses, story of David, story of Jesus, and so on. By reading about the circumstances these people were in in the Bible and the blessings and consequences they received based on their actions in these circumstances, we learn so much from them we can apply to our own lives. The Bible mainly focuses on events that took place in the country of Israel. God said that he made all the countries in the world, yet he wanted one country that was his own special one. He chose Israel to be this country just because he wanted to, not because Israel was better than any other country. He also chose Israel as his own personal country because of a promise he made to Abraham who, who was willing to make a very big sacrifice because, because God asked him to. And this can be found in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 19. We will learn about these series of events of Abraham very soon. The Bible states that God used Israel as an example for all the world to follow based on what God did with the Israelite people. Well, that's the end of this first teaching. I hope you enjoyed it. This Bible teaching, hopefully, it'll give you an understanding of what the main points of the Bible are about, why Jesus is so important, and why we must follow Jesus. I love all of you. God bless and take care. Again, I'm Michael Koch and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.